to talk about today. Apparently, as students of language specialized high school, we are all language lovers. We love to study languages and are interested in finding more about foreign languages. Right? But. Really? Really? But I'm sure there is at least some of you sitting down there secretly thinking, no, I hate English. I came to the wrong school. Well, let me tell you something. Let's not study languages. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not much of an anti-language kind of person. No, I love languages and is interested in conveying my thoughts in other languages. Then, what do I mean by not studying languages? Well, when I was young, I used to live a couple of years in Singapore. And that's, why I, and that's where I picked up my English and a little bit of Chinese. But when I first went there, I wasn't really ready to face the world of English. I knew the alphabet, I knew some words, but really, how much would a first grader know? Well, at that time, my mom used to make me write a diary every day, and after coming to Singapore, she wanted me to try writing some sentences in English. And here's the result of what I wrote at that time. I am so asleep, but I must write the diary, so I write diary fast. It is very untidy. I don't like write diary today. Well, as you can see, my English was not that good. Wrong grammar, messy sentences, and I even write about not wanting to write a diary in a diary. Silly. But now, well, I can't say my English is perfect, but at least I'm not afraid of speaking to others in English. Like, I'm standing up here and talking to you guys in English. So, how did I learn English? Now listen up, because this is the most important part. I just had fun. I knew no one would be reading my diary, so I did not really care about getting the perfect grammar or using the right words. Really, why do I care about that when no one's gonna read it? Slowly, I moved from writing about two or three sentences in, to writing the whole diary in English. If I had nothing fun to write about, I would come up with some imaginative story to fill up the page. And I remember this one was about some princess and a prince, but let's not look deeply. It's making me feel embarrassed. <laughs> I also enjoyed watching cartoons, even though I did not really understand what the characters were talking. Talking to friends from various nations at school was another fun thing I could do with English. Like this, English was just a tool for me to enjoy my life, and slowly my English improved. As you can see, I never really tried to study English. To me, English was something, just something to have fun with and discover something new. And this led me to discover the joy of learning languages and to join this school. And I'm sure that's why most of you joined this school too. And we all know the importance of language. Conveying one's thoughts to others through languages is only possible by humans, and the accumulation of culture and knowledge from our ancestors is easier through languages. Also in language, we can discover something that we never can discover in science or technology, that is the culture of where it is used. But ever since who knows when, we students have started to feel pressured about English. We suddenly had to read, write, and debate in English, and English just became another difficult subject we had to master. We had to highlight the main sentences, blank out the conjunctions, memorize the topic, and feel despair at our test scores. And that's when I realized that this was because we were trying to study languages. And I dare say, we shouldn't be doing this anymore. What we have been doing until now, memorizing over and over again, was just an act of preparing for tests. But if you really want to understand a language, and to communicate fluently. What about just playing around with languages just like I did? In case some of you like, want to refute me saying that, but I'm not living in a foreign country, let me introduce another way of how I used to play around with languages. And that is to look for patterns. After all, languages are like gigantic puzzles. I brought some examples to help you understand. Now look here and, well, guess what should be in the blank? And we all know that it should be however, because the two independent clauses are of contrast. What about putting these words in order? And we know, because 
It's a logical because we know that the order should be in subject, verb, and object. Like this, you can easily understand English because we are all aware of the pattern. Interesting thing is that this applies to other languages as well. I cited a question from International Linguistics Olympiad, and this question was made by Yulia Mazorva. And based on the Parisian phrases that are translated into English above, you have to guess what that Parisian phrase means in English. Now, if you guys have a pen or a paper, take it out and try to solve this. Don't freak out just because it's written in Persian. I told you, language is all about discovering the pattern. If you look closely, you'll realize that the order of written in Persian is the same as the one in English, and that zere and pene both means under. Now look specifically into some sentences, and you can easily discover the difference between the two under. Zere would probably mean that the upper part is completely covering the lower part, while pene would mean that the upper part is not completely covering the lower part. With this in mind, we can look at the, at the question again, and with a little hint from the sentence that I've highlighted above, we will easily infer that the answer to this question would mean a stool that is not completely covered by the table, but is just somewhere around the table, meaning that this would mean the stool at the table. And wow, we've just learned Persian. In fact, this way of viewing languages in the aspect of grammar, syntax, semantics, pragmatics, morphology, and so on, are all part of linguistics. As you were just playing around with languages, we had just taken part in the linguistic research of learning language technologies. And now we have discovered how fun languages can be. So let's not turn away from languages. Let's not study them. Let's just have fun and language will naturally come to you. Thank you.